Hey guys, I'm gonna give you a three-stage approach every single athlete, especially my strength athlete, should take to maintain strong and healthy knees. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey guys, how you doing? Thank you so much for stopping by the YouTube channel. Today I'm here with 2016 Olympian Maddie Sasser and we're working through her knee pain and I'm going to show you the process and the exact steps that you can take at home to maintain strong and healthy knees with all of your lifting activities. Now, she's doing a touchdown here. We're going to get back to that eventually. The first step in maintaining strong and healthy knees is to look outside of the knee at the hips and the ankles. So Maddie, let's do this. I'm going to have you lay with your back right here, head down on that side. Now, Maddie has been dealing with some left-sided knee pain for a couple months now. We've been working together since the early spring. We can move that out to the side. One of the important things to understand is that the knee joint is often only the site of pain for most athletes, especially my strength athletes. Even though you may be feeling pain in the quad or the patellar tendon, most strength athletes are not necessarily dealing with tendinopathy. It's usually a biomechanical issue stemming from the way in which the knee is being moved and the forces that are being placed on it. So we are going to start by looking outside of the knee at the hip. So the first step is to screen hip joint. What we're going to do is first look at hip internal rotation. Now in this position, you're going to raise, grab a friend, raise the hip to about 60 degrees of flexion. So not all the way up, not all the way flat. From right here, you're just gonna go out to the side. Now, only so far as that pelvis doesn't move. You crank too far and that pelvis is gonna jump right off the floor. Just to that far and see what it looks like. See how much motion you have. Then go to the other side and check. What we're looking for is symmetry. Right and left side, are we symmetrical? Now hers is pretty close. Again, if you were a baseball player or a golfer, I would expect to see a little bit of asymmetry. But when you're a strength athlete in loading your body in a symmetrical pattern, like a squat, deadlift, clean, or snatch, we want to see as much symmetry as possible. Now, in her case, her hips are pretty symmetrical with internal rotation. If she had an issue, one of two things I would have given her would have been a banded joint mobilization or an assisted hip airplane stretching and dropping into a good stretch on the outside of the hip. The next stretch or next test that we're going to do is looking at the way in which the hip extends and externally rotates. This is called the Faber test. What you're gonna do is take this foot, and you're gonna place the outside of your ankle bone right above your knee joint. And then without your pelvis tipping on its side, you're gonna just let that hip drop down as far as possible. Now again, you can do this by yourself at home. Just make sure that your pelvis doesn't pop up like this. So keep your pelvis flat. And you can see right here how far I can drop that knee down. So right here, we're about a thumb and a fist away from the edge understand how that distance is, and then we're gonna to go to the other side. From right here, we're gonna drop that pelvis down, and you can see here how far away she is on this side. So what this test is showing, the Faber test, is that her left hip is having an issue in extending and externally rotating. And again, if we are having a significant asymmetry in hip mobility, over time, with loading the body symmetrically, we're gonna be having excessive loads placed on one part of the body, which is one of the reasons, one of the risk factors for developing knee pain. So we have an issue in the Faber test. What do you do? We're gonna start with the kettlebell weight shift. So let's pop on up. So what we're gonna do is a kettlebell weight shift. This is the exercise go-to that I like to use for people who have a Faber test problem. So from right here, she's gonna use the weight to stay upright with her chest. I don't want her to hip hinge on the way back. So from right here, what she's gonna do, chest upright, she's going to open the knee by squeezing her left glute and then shifting to the side until it brings out a really good stretch in her left groin. Do you feel a good stretch there? Very good. Five second hold and then come back. Now, I want you to do today five reps of that. Now, as she goes through those, if you are doing these, and you feel like a black sensation in the front of the hip, you can play around with the position of your foot. It doesn't have to be as far out to the side. For some athletes, they can't get that far. So you could start at about a 45 degree angle to start, again, opening the hip by squeezing the glute and then shifting over until you feel a good stretch in the groin. So you can play around with the position of your foot to find the most optimal positioning that brings out the desired stretch. Again, this is what we're going to do because of the problem Faber test on her left side. 
Good stretch? Okay. Now what we're gonna do is retest. So on your back. Always test and retest to see if the exercise that you are doing is efficient and effective at bringing out the desired change. So hip up and over, keep that pelvis flat, drop down. There you go. So right there, we were able to make more symmetrical hip mobility in the motion of external rotation and extension. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do next is look outside the knee again at the ankle joint. So let me show you how you can screen your ankle mobility at home. Jump on up. What you're gonna do, and I'll demo this real quick and then we'll bring Maddie through it, is you're gonna get close to a wall and you want your foot five inches from the edge of the wall. For most people, that's gonna be a thumb extended and a fist. Your hips will be square. You're gonna shift forward as far as you can. Don't swivel your hips. You're gonna go straight forward as far as you can to mimic the exact positioning of your lower body that you wanna see during the squat and see how far can you go before your heel pops up. You can see here, I can touch my knee all the way to the wall. Again, we're not necessarily looking for whether or not you have the most excellent mobility, but whether or not there is symmetrical mobility. So, Maddie, let's jump down here. Let's do thumb and a fist. Let's do your right side first, okay? So I'm gonna have you put your foot all the way up here, okay? Drop down, okay? Now, pelvis straight, okay? Drive that knee straight forward over these toes as far towards the wall as you can. Good, so from right there, we're about four fingers away from the wall. So that's her level of ankle mobility on that side. Okay, let's do the same thing now on your other side. Okay. All the way up there. Okay, again, hips square. Drive straight forward as far as you can. Don't let that hip swivel. Again, pretty symmetrical today. Now, in the past, this was actually something that Maddie had an issue with. In her right side, her non-painful side actually had a restriction in ankle mobility. Now, the reason that could be significant at all is because when you have a big significant on a non-painful side, it can lead to problems in movement. So one of the issues that we saw early on was that Maddie was dealing with a hip shift to the left side. Now, obviously that can be due to problems in hip mobility that the Faber test exposed. But if you're squatting down, if you're unable to show symmetrical ankle mobility, the body will naturally shift to one side or the other, meaning that the left knee could be sustaining a lot of overload because the right knee can't go forward enough, causing the body to shift. And with the amount of times that Maddie trains during the week could be a factor in leading to overloading certain tissues, reaching that biological tipping point and eventual knee pain. So, the idea is that even though this isn't a direct cause on that side, it's still something that we wanted to clear up to allow her to become more efficient in her movement. So she had been doing banded joint mobilizations for that right ankle to improve that mobility. And now today you can see a lot of symmetrical mobility, which is excellent. So let's step on up. So, so far we've talked about the first step, the first two steps in fixing knee pain and just helping you maintain strong and healthy knees as a strength athlete is looking outside of the knee, looking at the hips, looking at the ankles, screening for and fixing problems in uh, mobility symmetry that you may have. Now I wanna show you two exercises that I think every single strength athlete should maintain within their program, either as a warm up or as an assistant exercise, depending on whether or not they're in pain and getting out of pain, we're trying to maintain healthy knees. And that's gonna be a single leg squat called a touchdown exercise and a unassisted hip air plane. So we're gonna start with the touchdown. Now the idea behind a touchdown is it allows us to train the body in single leg as strength athletes were almost always in double leg with clean snatches, deadlifts, and regular squats. And a lot of times we can expose problems in single leg strength and stability with a single leg squat um, and also improve those coordination problems that we see. Now, when an athlete is dealing in, with knee pain, the last thing I want them to do is to push into more knee pain. Oftentimes, people who have knee pain, if they drive their knee forward, they're gonna overload a lot of those tissues that are currently a little flared up, 
and it can create more pain. So what I love to do is a touchdown squat where we just create more of a hip dominant movement. And as you build the height up, the knee has to come forward in order to do the squat, but you're just doing so in a way that your body can tolerate a little bit better. So it's hinge first, squat down, tap the ground, and then all the way back up. Now, Maddie, let's jump up here and let's see what these look like side to side. Let's do your um, right leg first. So your non-painful side. Now the cue that I gave Maddie the first day was to think about an egg being down there in that her goal is to tap the egg and not break the egg shell. So hips go back, slow squat down, tap with the heel, and then all the way back up, full extension. That first few inches of the hinge is the most important. Okay, so hinge, hips back, chest forward, then squat down, tap the ground, all the way back up. Think about it like this, because we're trying to make this posterior dominant at the start, we're going to think RDL to the knee and then squat it down from there. So with that original hinge, you should feel the glute kick on and then squat down. The quads are working very well. They're just not going to be overloaded early on. So we're being very careful not to overload a joint that may be a little symptomatic. And then as she gets better with these and drives up, eventually the knee continues to move forward in a deep squat pattern. Okay, squat all the way down. Very good, and then back up. So again, whenever you would do a regular double leg squat, the last thing you would do is drive the knees forward like that. It's a continuous hips and knees together. And then as you go into the deep squat, the knees eventually come forward. So with our touchdown too, we get the hips involved. We stay balanced with an inclined trunk and then we squat down. And if this is symptomatic, we just make it a little bit more hip dominant. So I would have her push the hips back a little bit more. Okay, back down. What I'm looking for is the foot staying very stable, big toe jammed down, knee staying in line with the foot. Usually at the start, I would program sets of 15 to 20 for a lot of athletes because we're working on that coordination and rebuilding that proper movement pattern. Feel the glute working pretty good? That glute should be burning like crazy if you're doing this correctly. Let's switch sides. Let's go to that other side. Oh yeah, feel the burn. So right here we have just three plates. Let's see how this feels today on that left side. Dealing with just a slight bit of pain recently. Let's see how it looks. So get that hinge, slow down, tap, back up. How's that feel today? Feels good. Okay, let's do 10 of those right now. So hinge, tap down, back up. Good, you don't need to throw this leg as far back, just use those hips. Okay, right there, straight down, tap, back up. Now, early on when an athlete is dealing with knee pain, I will have them use this as a warm up to use prior to the rest of their training to sort of get their body moving well decrease some pain that they may have due to movement, sort of loosen up the body. And eventually this can turn into an accessory exercise afterwards. So this can be post-training or even on off days. But something like this, I truly believe every athlete should at least be doing this two, if not three times a week. And again, your volume doesn't have to be very high. Eventually, once you get out of pain, this would be maybe three sets of 10 reps. Pretty simple. You would get through this in a couple minutes, really. And then what you can do is build that height back up. Now, that right there, 10 reps, how did that feel? Tiring, huh? Painful? I don't feel. Don't feel any pain. Okay, really tired. just really tired. And that's understanding, using this as a test in itself to say, hey, how do I feel side to side? It's normal sometimes to have a dominant side versus the other side, especially I get some people that come and they've played soccer their whole life and their stance leg is just extremely stable. Their other side, while it's better at kicking the ball, more dynamic movements, they're a little bit more unstable. Well, that's fine again, if you're doing an asymmetrical sport or doing one-sided movements a lot like soccer, but with a strength sport, we need to have as much symmetry as possible. So using this to sort of expose those issues in coordination and balance and then tackle them can be very helpful. Okay, let's come to the new exercise today the unassisted hip airplanes. So I'm gonna demo first and I want you to try, okay? We'll do it on the right side first for three reps and then we'll do the left side for three reps. A single leg RDL into a motion of rotation across the hip joint. 
This is an exercise I first learned from Dr. Stuart McGill, and the idea behind it is to teach an athlete how to steer their strength about their hip. Now, we looked at the Faber test today, and then we found that Maddie had an issue with her left hip being able to extend and externally rotate. Well, if we're doing our mobility work and it's improving, but yet day in, out, day in and day out, we still find that that left hip stiff, that means that we need to also improve the strength and stability in the rotational capabilities of the hip in order to allow the motion that we're improving and the mobility flexibility that we're improving allow it to stick. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'll show from the side first. You're gonna get into a single leg RDL position, back leg straight. From here, we're going to rotate up just a little bit, keeping the knee in place. Pause, drop down, pause. Drop your hip, pause, back up, pause, come all the way through. Three reps on your right side. Now, when I'm first teaching an athlete this, the first time I'm just gonna have them get into the single leg RDL position. So if you're very shaky, just get here and hold it for 10 seconds and then come back, get used to being there, okay? That's why the single leg RDL exercise is such a great exercise for every athlete because it teaches them that balance and stability in the hinge pattern. So this is just a little bit different from that. So let's get over here. So right leg first, you got it. Okay, so grab the ground. Let's do right leg stance first. Left leg, lock it out. So squeeze this glute, bend your knee or straighten your knee out. Good, so tip forward. Now from here, you're gonna rotate up. Don't let this knee come in. Okay, open your pelvis, pause. Drop down, flat, drop your pelvis, back up. Now, keep this leg straight the whole time. Okay, very good. Now from right here, this lateral hip musculature, specifically the glute medius, when she opens, okay, open your hip, it's contracting to pull the hip open. Okay, so we're working on dynamic stability through that lateral hip in that rotary component. Drop your pelvis. Now we're working those muscles eccentrically to lengthen under tension, but maintain position. And then drop your pelvis again. Now we're feeling a light stretch here. Again, knee staying stable, foot staying stable. This is excellent for foot stability. And then all the way back up. Okay, one more. Like straight. If you're doing this correctly, you should get done and that lateral glute should be burning pretty good. Excellent. Good, control, control. Again, this is an assistant exercise to help with controlling the strength you do have, okay? Maddie can clean and jerk over 120 kilos. She's extremely strong, but yet now I wanna give her the ability to control and own that strength through every avenue, which will then allow her strength and her athleticism to come out fully and to also be maintained because we're creating just a more optimal and efficient movement pattern. Not bad, now comes the left side, okay? Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> okay, flat first. Okay, open the pelvis. Pause, don't let that knee come in. Good. Okay, close the pelvis. Good, drop the pelvis until you feel a stretch right here. Feel that stretch come out? Very good. Come back up to neutral. Good, strain this knee out. Now at the start with this, if you have a tough time coming up this far without falling over, just do very small motions, okay? You can see Maddie's opening up her pelvis a really good amount. But what you could do is just go up a few inches, down, drop a few inches. So you can do just a very small amount of motion at the start. Keep that left or that right leg straight. Good. Excellent. Good job, one more, you got it. Nice and slow, tip up, good. Don't let that knee come in. Very good, very good. Good, control back down, keep that knee straight. Excellent. Good work. Oops. I see the beads of sweat coming. There we go. You wouldn't think three little uh, hip airplanes would be so tough, huh? Good job. Okay, so that is the other exercise that I really wanted you to do. So right there, we've got a few things going on. We've got 
Uh, check your hips, check your ankles. Understand that the hip and the ankle have a direct connection to the knee, and oftentimes the symptoms are here, the problem is there. Once you expose in those uh, and then address those issues, it's then on to control, to balance issues. And we can work on the single leg touchdown, building that up, the hip airplane. I'm gonna show you how to progress that here in a second. And then we're gonna show what I like to do once we get under the barbell. We're gonna talk specifically about the squat today because that's one of the areas that brought out the most amount of pain for you. I'm gonna show you guys how I would like you guys to warm up for squat day. Um, to go on out, to just maintain the body as best as possible. So here's how you would progress the unassisted hip airplane. What we're gonna do is create an RNT, reactive neuromuscular training. You're gonna take a small band and you're gonna put it just above the knee, pulling out. So the idea is that it's trying to pull you to fall to the side. So from right here, you're going to get a little bit of tension, okay? You're going to get nice and tall and then perform that exact same motion. So from here, you're gonna open up your hips. Don't let your knee cave in. Keep your toe nice and flat and grounded. This is excellent for foot stability, making sure that your big toe stays jammed down, not rolling on its side. Drop the pelvis till you feel a stretch and then come back up. Again, something like this, I would recommend two to three sets of 10 repetitions making sure that you're working on the control aspect and really feeling like you're, again, steering your strength through your lateral hip all the way back up. This is an exercise that I've given and works excellent for some of the other elite athletes that I've worked with. Martins Lisi's, Mirabai Chinu of India. That is an excellent way of, again, allowing you to control the rotation through the hip that we've gotten when we have problems in mobility. So let's now go to that third and final stage last stage, which is getting back under the barbell. One of the things that I love to do before we get under the barbell and then with our first couple sets is to work on opening the hip. So come right here and I want you to do a deep squat with me now where we open that hip up. So squat down as deep as possible. Now take that right hip, open it up. Okay, take your left hip, open it up. Does it feel like it moves out to the side the same now? Better, okay. So guys, if you get down into the bottom of the squat, this is also another check, is that when you're sitting down here, you wanna make sure that those hips move just as well as the other side. So again, what we're looking for is that we have just as much symmetry right hip versus left hip. So I've had a lot of people that, especially for example, people that have an issue in the Faber test, like Maddie did, is they'll get here and they can open that right hip really well. And they get here, it just doesn't wanna move. So on top of doing your kettlebell weight shift to enhance that flexibility of the groin muscles to open the hip, you can also do a drill on top of the hip airplane as well, where you just squeeze and open that hip up an isometric in the deep squat. Squeeze that lateral glute, bring it back. Squeeze, 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 and bring it back. Basically what we're doing is an isometric in a very position specific to the deep squat. So a lot of times our drills that we do, flexibility, mobility, they don't necessarily look to the extremes of what the athlete, specifically the Olympic weightlifter needs to get into for the bottom of the deep squat. So here doing this deep squat isometric can be very, very helpful to open the hip. First off, see whether or not you're side to side different. So after all that drill, I would have you squat down and do this side to side and just see, okay, do you feel symmetrical side to side? Now we're ready to go. Okay, so now that we're done with that, what I would have you do, and we don't need to do a lot today, we'll just do it with the barbell, but your first one to three warm-up sets, the first one to two reps of those are going to be slow tempo with a five second pause in the bottom. And the goal for that is to really work on your control. We talked about before, how when you would go really fast, your knee pain would come out, but if you went sort of slow and controlled, you wouldn't have as much knee pain. So warming up in this manner of going slow and controlled and using pauses can allow your body to become acclimated to the exact groove and the position under load that you're then going to use whenever you train heavier, okay? So let's do this. 
I want a set of five reps, and we'll just go through that sequence. You're gonna do two of those reps, slow tempo. Think five seconds in the bottom, and your, uh, let's pause actually with both of them. So we'll do your first two are gonna be five, five, one, as far as your tempo, and then you'll have three reps that'll be normal tempo, okay? So let's try that, see what that looks like. While you are looking at these, so as a coach, if you're looking at your athlete, watch to see at this time whether or not they're symmetrical on their descent, making sure that they're not shifting one side versus the other. So I would like these to be barefoot so that the athlete can really feel for the ground and their stability. Then they can put their weightlifting shoes on if they need to afterwards. Okay, five second pause and come back up. Okay, one more, slow that down. Remember, five second, real seconds, two, three, four, Five, now down here, during those first one or two, you can even open up your hips, squeeze your glutes side to side, get a feel for whether or not those muscles are working well and the hip are <clears throat> feeling open, then come back up. Okay, three regular tempo squats. Sort of working on slowly building that speed. So take your first one, maybe at about a 60% speed. Okay, control it down, feel your groove, get the bounce, back up. Okay, speed it up a little bit more for your second one. Good, <clears throat> and then make this last one a regular tempo. Okay, so control it down, get your bounce, and then back up. <laughs> Very good. All right, and you can put that back in the rack. <laughs> we'll we'll uh, raise it or lower it for the next set. <laughs> All right, guys. So that is going to be the steps that I think every single strength athlete can take in order to help them maintain strong and healthy knees for as long as possible. And a lot of this is a little bit of maintenance work that you're gonna need a friend for or your coach to just help you make sure that you're maintaining your body as efficiently and optimally as possible. So that's looking at the hips, it's looking at the ankles, and then it's also maintaining a few single leg exercises within the breadth of your double leg training, squats, deadlifts, cleans, or snatches. So whatever your goals are, have some single leg work in there that can expose and help you clear up problems in strength, instability, in different planes of motion than we're used to, to really help you build a more robust injury risk uh, or less injury risk body. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions and be sure to follow Maddie as she prepares uh, for Pan Ams in a few weeks and uh, we'll go from there. All right guys, thank you so much for checking out today's YouTube video. Until next time, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos? These people have lost.